Use of gypsum in soil applications and in water treatment is a standard practice for managing sodium levels. There is some confusion, however, when it comes to selecting gypsum products because there are many different products being marketed for sodium management, some which contain gypsum and others which do not. In this video, we look at products based on gypsum and products based on a related material, calcium sulfate and hydrite and we explain why their very different performance when dissolved in water is important when making product selections. Okay, today I want to talk a little bit about some of the work we did with uh, gypsum and calcium sulfate and hydrite and there's a report that is linked to this update for you to take a look at also but what we, if you recall gypsum is calcium sulfate with two waters called waters of hydration. So the, this molecule is hydrated. This material, when you put it into water, will break down, will ionize into calcium plus sulfate. That's the way it sort of splits naturally in water. And the presence of this water already in the crystalline portion of the molecule, so it's a crystal, but it has water associated with the calcium sulfate molecules enhances the way that it goes into solution. Now I want to talk about another product that's uh, that's being marketed as a replacement for gypsum or an alternative, maybe even better than gypsum, at least that's what uh, uh, manufacturers claims are, and it is calcium sulfate and hydrate. Actually and hydrite. And it's just calcium calcium sulfate. And this material is also um, soluble in water, thermodynamically, physically, you put it in water, eventually this material will break down into calcium, not break down, but it will ionize into calcium and sulfur, sulfate, two minuses. The difference between the anhydrite and gypsum product is this step in the dissolution of the product is extremely slow based on the information that I'm going to show you associated with this video. So we're having a little bit of difficulty um, recommending the use of uh, calcium sulfate and hydrate for use in sodium management in leaching programs, but uh, we still are recommending gypsum, which is calcium sulfate dihydrate. Uh, as the product for amending soils to manage uh, manage sodium. And we want to uh, make you aware of these products and we'll, uh, we'll show you one that we've uh, worked with a little bit. And there's a variety of them out there and we'll show you the labeling and the, uh, that you might want to be uh, aware of when you're making the decision. And, and the fact that uh, this may be a slow release uh, calcium product, we just don't know how long it's going to take for this to release. It's certainly not uh, releasing the bulk of its calcium and sulfate within minutes or even hours. So there's a little bit of a difference uh, between those products and we'll try to show you uh, what that means. There's a variety of ways of evaluating how fast something will dissolve in a solution or become soluble and for the gypsum studies we're just going to look at a simple increase in electrical conductivity as the calcium sulfate dissolves and increases the conductivity of electricity through the water. For a uh, uh, one milliequivalent of calcium per liter of water. So if you put one milliequivalent in water, that'll increase the EC by 0 0.085 decisiemens per meter. So that's our basic number that we want to keep track of because we're going to look at how how much calcium goes into solution from either the calcium sulfate dihydrate or the calcium sulfate anhydrite. So if we put, uh, and what we're going to do in the, in the studies I'm going to show you, is we put two grams of uh, calcium sulfate uh, per liter, and that should increase when we use these numbers by 2.21 decisiemens per meter. If we use two grams of calcium sulfate and hydrite per liter, that should increase by 2.50 decisiemens per meter. So these numbers give you an idea. This is the target that we'd be looking for uh, when we s dissolve this amount of calcium sulfate or gypsum dihydrate in water or if we use uh, calcium sulfate and hydrate in water. 
uh, that's the increase that we should see in solution. So let's take a look at what we saw when we put these uh, two grams per liter in and uh, measured the electrical conductivity and how fast uh, and how close these products come to these two numbers. If they dissolve properly, they should start to approach these two numbers. Okay, let's take a look at the Allied Custom Gypsum first, which is a pharmaceutical or food grade, uh, fairly pure gypsum. Uh, all gypsum products will have a little bit of uh, anhydride in them, and it's the same as all anhydrides will have a little gypsum in them. So what we do is we stick the EC meter into the flask. This is a 500 cc flask, and we'll get a background reading with, of the distilled water before we add anything into it. And you can see there's just a little bit of background EC uh, over there at uh, point, uh, point 0.02 decisiemens per meter. And then we're going to take the, uh, in this case, we're going to add one gram of uh, the calcium sulfite dihydrate gypsum uh, to the flask. That will be equivalent to two grams of gypsum per liter. This is 500 mils in the flask, so one gram per 500 mils is the same as two grams per liter. And we'll watch as the electrical conductivity increases, as you can see it going up now, and the time increases on the uh, watch. Now I've sped up the time again just to give us a little bit of idea how much uh, uh, faster this will go into solution. That's at a minute, uh, that's at two minutes, we're at uh, 1.65, and uh, then we'll take another look at uh, three minutes and uh, finally uh, all the way out to, uh, to four minutes to uh, see what we get and it, it pretty much uh, topped out after four minutes at uh, 1.7. Uh, our target for gypsum, if it was pure gypsum and uh, it was completely dissolved, everything would dissolve in there, the reading would be uh, 2.21 uh, decisiemens per meter. So we're a little bit lower than, uh, than, the, than the reading that we would like to see for a pure gypsum completely uh, solubilized into water. Now for the calcium sulfate anhydrite product, we selected the CalCM product. Uh, it's a nice prilled granule from Art Wilson, and it's uh, labeled as having uh, more calcium sulfate uh, than gypsum. And that's actually the case, as you'll recall, two grams of uh, anhydrite should yield an EC of 2.5 decisiemens per meter if all that material goes into solution based on our conversion from amount of calcium uh, in the product dissolved into water. So let's take a look at what the uh, calcium uh, product does when we compare it to standard uh, gypsum, the calcium sulfate dihydride that we just ran. So here we have the, uh, the same flask type of flask with uh, 500 cc's of distilled water. There's a small amount of background uh, electrical conductivity. We're going to add one gram of uh, this product, but we ground it up uh, in a mortar and pestle so it's very fine so that the, the particle size would not be a uh, uh, a problem so it's completely ground up very fine uh, powder and now we're going to add that to the uh, to the same uh, type of system we had before and watch the EC increase uh, over time we're going to speed up time the same way we did uh, in the previous uh, sample so we we'll get it up to uh, a minute and we can see the EC is at 0.3 decisiemens per meter. We'll zoom it up again to uh, two, around two minutes, uh, it's 0.32. Remember our target is 2.5 decisiemens per meter for the anhydrite product. Three minutes it's at 0.34. Uh, we'll zoom it up again to, uh, to four minutes and it's uh, 0.36. So uh, it seems a little bit uh, slower uh, than the than the gypsum product and then we'll look at some what it looks like uh, also at about 12 hours after uh, these materials were were allowed to to rest this is about 12 hours after the um, uh, both containers have been allowed to settle out so they've set overnight about 72 degrees so what I'm going to do is uh, give this one a stir this will be the calcium. You can see there's product on the bottom. And we can see that there's still quite a bit of product that's not dissolved. And okay, let's take a look at what the EC is. This is after 12 hours. The EC is at 0.57, not quite 0.6. Now you can see there's still a uh, very cloudy, heavy suspension of, of material. 
Now let's give a little Okay, let's check the gypsum. You see there's just a minor amount of uh well, there might be something in there. You really can't see much. There's a little faint residue that was on the bottom. And the resulting EC is 1.76 decisiemens per meter 12 hours after oh, the material was introduced into the flask. So this graph gives you a, an illustration of how the solubility changed with those two different products with the uh, calcium calcium sulfate anhydride on the bottom on the red line and the gypsum calcium sulfate dihydrate on the top line and uh, the relatively fast uh, dissolution of the gypsum and the relatively slow uh, dissolution of the calcium sulfate anhydride. The target was 2.2 uh, decisiemens per meter if the all of the two grams per liter that were applied went into solution we got up to almost 1.8 for gypsum. For calcium sulfate and hydrite, the target was 2.5 decisiemens per meter, and we can see that uh, it was really uh, ineffective as far as delivering the amount of calcium that we had anticipated the product should deliver. To double check our simple electrical conductivity and calcium uh, checks, we sent samples of calcium plus and calcul to anhydrite products and ag gypsum, a uh, dihydrate product, to Brookside Labs in New Knoxville, Ohio. They placed 0.2 grams of uh, each one of these samples into 200 cc's of water and shook the samples uh, for 24 hours and, and measured the yield of uh, calcium and sulfur in solution. Uh, and that's after passing through a 0.45 micron filter. So this is the actual materials uh, that had dissolved and we see what the comparisons are. What we'd expected from uh, uh, an anhydrite product would be 29% calcium and 23% sulfur. We see we're down below 10% on both of those readings. For the gypsum, we would expect to see 23% calcium and 19% sulfur. Uh, we didn't quite get those uh, yields out of the ag gypsum. As I mentioned, there's some anhydrite in the uh, standard ag products. What we got was about 19.5% gypsum, um, calcium, and 15.6% sulfur. Uh, which is actually the same ratio. It's uh, 1.2 parts of calcium to one part sulfur uh, for for gypsum uh, products. So it looks like we're getting the same results that we got with the simple electrical conductivity tests and that the anhydrite products are very slowly soluble and we're just not sure how long it would take for them to yield uh, the calcium that we're seeing uh, yielding very rapidly out of the uh, calcium sulfate dihydrate products. Now let's take a look at some of the uh, labeling issues surrounding these two types of uh, calcium sulfate products and how it's handled in California, I'm not sure it's handled, how it's handled in other states, and take a look at a couple of labels. For the state of California, if a product is uh, gypsum or calcium sulfate dihydrate based, it'll say gypsum on the label somewhere, it will give the words calcium sulfate dihydrate and also that it's derived from mine gypsum. Any other products like the anhydrides will say the name of the product at the top. It will not say gypsum. It will say gypsum equivalent, something like gypsum equivalent, and the amount of calcium and sulfur, and it will say derived from and the list of materials that it's derived from. So now let's take a look at, a, at uh, three labels, uh, two different calcium sulfate anhydride products, and one gypsum product label just to see how uh, companies are handling the labeling for gypsum versus calcium sulfate and hydrides. This is pretty simple uh, product. It's uh, ag gypsum. It says it's calcium sulfate dihydrate and gypsum, 92%. There you go. That's uh, what you need to know. And on the bottom it says derived from mined gypsum. Very clear labeling. This is a gypsum product. Now here's an example of the calcium product that we tested from Art Wilson. It is very clearly labeled also. Uh, it does not claim to be gypsum. It says it's calcium sulfate and it gives the gypsum equivalent as you would expect. And at the bottom it says uh, what those materials are from, calcium sulfate, uh, hydrated calcium sulfate, uh, etc. So this is a very clean label. You, you can tell this product is not gypsum. This is the CalSol label from North Pacific. This label is a little bit more difficult to understand. 
it lists at the top uh, calcium sulfate and calcium sulfate dihydrate uh, and there's 70% calcium sulfate, 86% calcium sulfate dihydrate. That's basically an indicator that this is a gypsum equivalent and that the product is not gypsum but it is a calcium sulfate uh, anhydrite type of a product. This is a little bit more difficult to, uh, to label and, and it doesn't seem to conform exactly to California guidelines but this is one of the uh, types of labels that is difficult to determine exactly uh, what you're getting in the product. For products to be effective at reducing sodium levels in the soil they must be able to rapidly dissolve in water and release calcium ions that will displace sodium ions from the soil exchange sites. In our tests and in those conducted at Brookside Labs products that were based on gypsum were readily dissolved in water as we expected them to be. In contrast, products that were based on calcium sulfate and hydrate dissolved extremely slowly in water. As a result of this slow rate of dissolution, the calcium ions that are needed for sodium management are not available when anhydrite products are used. For this reason, we cannot recommend products such as calcium and calcol and others based on an anhydrite form of calcium sulfate for sodium management unless new data emerges that indicates that these products are effective for sodium management.